Welcome to the Perusia podcast, inviting expert guest speakers each week to discuss their own faith journey as well as a different aspect of the Catholic faith every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. live on the Voice of Charity. Hello and welcome to another Perusia podcast. I'm Shabal Raish, your host. And we are with a very good friend of ours on the other side of the planet in Canada, um, the founder of Bishop Sheen today. His name is Alan Smith, and uh, he joins me across from Canada right now. Hello, Alan. How are you doing? Charbel, I'm doing great, and thank you for having me. Uh, we always refer to you as the being from the land down under. Uh, so I don't know what you call Canada if we're, you know, something that's above you. But uh, again, it's still nice with technology to be able to almost feel like you're in the next room. So it's great to be with you here to uh, share a little bit about the wit and wisdom of the Venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. We are excited. I mean, we, we uh, tried to go live um, last week with uh, technology issues. And, and I imagine you, you're, you have some really bad um, weather at the moment or, or did have last week anyway. Um, and we, we sort of touched on a little bit about yourself and, and, and the apostolate. So people could sort of see the 15 minutes we got together <laughs> last week. That's on YouTube uh, and on Facebook right now on our Facebook page. However, it did get cut and we did... Um, basically uh yeah run out of time and so we're here now to talk about your books but before i dive in you are um on the board of of directors there for the cause of canonization for fulton sheen could you talk a bit about how that happened and and, and a bit about that experience right well it, it was the year was 2012 and um i started to do um you know a uh, amount of work uh, promoting the writings and teachings of the Venerable Sheen in Canada. And I've been on radio since 2006. I host a weekly Catholic hour where I share the Rosary Chaplet of Divine Mercy, Lives of the Saints. And uh, in 2012, I was able to secure the rights to um, share Archbishop Sheen's audio reflections from his uh, retreats, his uh, radio shows, uh, and some of the audio uh, portions of his television shows. And I started to share those recordings on the radio. And of course, it was a great success. And I started to realize that uh, the work that Sheen was doing at the end of his life is that he was spending a lot of time with seminarians and with priests giving priestly retreats. And so I thought I wanted to uh, kind of imitate Fulton Sheen by trying to reach out to the priests in Canada, the seminarians in Canada. And so I started to visit the seminary and share Sheen's writings with all the seminarians across Canada. And once I started to do that, word came to Peoria that there was this uh, energetic soul in Canada sharing Fulton Sheen's writings and teachings. And so uh, Bishop Daniel Jenke, the Bishop of Peoria, who is overseeing the cause of Sheen's canonization, invited me to sit on the board of directors. And he said, we want your energy. If you can get Fulton Sheen on the radio in Canada and get Fulton Sheen's books to every seminarian in Canada, uh, we want you on our team. And so uh, they invited me and, uh, of course, spent a number of years uh, serving on that board of directors and uh, a great group of souls, uh, you know, from all over America. I was the only non-American on the board, but uh, they won't hold that against me. Uh, but again, our <laughs> mission was to try to share Fulton Sheen far and wide. And uh, again, we're doing that still today. So uh, even though the cause for his canonization is on pause, we like to say, in that uh, we've postponed uh, the um, beatification mass, uh, we're waiting for a new date, uh, our work continues. And so what I'm doing, sharing Fulton Sheen's books all over the world, is part of the work. So uh, I don't know if that makes sense. But again, it was just uh, my eagerness to share Fulton Sheen uh, got somebody's attention. And so uh, that uh, got me at that position on the board of directors. Yeah, fantastic. What an experience uh, that would have been. And to be a part of what we're, we're saying, a, a saint in the making, um, and now he's officially a venerable. Um, uh, we pray that uh, the next day, is it, if just for our viewers, is it the next level up, um, to be beatified? Is that what yes. we're waiting for now? 
Right. Um, you know, I think when people follow the process of a candidate to become a saint, he, of course, uh, is declared a servant of God when his cause is opened up. And so you're called the servant of God, uh, Fulton Sheen. And so uh, we prepared all of his uh, writings, his uh, radio recordings, uh, everything that Fulton Sheen said or wrote uh, we sent to the Vatican for them to look at. And so they took his 66 books, his 30 years of, of uh, television, uh, you wow. know, his, um, again, it's like 20 years of radio, many years of television, 30 years of newspaper columns. Like there is a great body of work and they put it all in a crate or crates, sent <laughs> it to the Vatican and they comb through it. And, uh, you know, they found no errors. I mean, they, he was, uh, very sound in his writing. And uh, so in 2012, Pope Benedict XVI declared Fulton Sheen venerable, uh, which means worthy of imitation. And then the Vatican says, now, um, if you have any miracles, um, please send them and we'll look at them also. And so uh, there was this beautiful miracle of a little boy that was uh, born, um, stillborn actually, and uh, he was uh, dead for 61 minutes. Of course, they tried to revive him. And of course, the parents kept praying for the intercession of Fulton Sheen to revive their child. And uh, the doctor was coming into the room to write the... Uh, you know, the certificate of death. And uh, just as he was about to write, this baby came back to life. And so uh, this child now, um, again, is uh, 10 years old, a uh, beautiful baby uh, mm. that's now a, full, you know, a big boy. And he actually has no brain damage. And um, again, it's a miracle that he came back to life, but it's a miracle that he doesn't have brain damage being uh, dead for 61 minutes. And so yeah, uh, it's a beautiful story to read about James, uh, you know, Fulton Ingram and um, Ingstrom. Wow. It's, uh, again, a family that was touched by Venerable Sheen. Again, I encourage people to look into that story. Uh, so that miracle went to the Vatican and the seven doctors that were on the panel uh, that uh, scrutinized the medical evidence uh, yeah. deemed it to be a miracle. And so uh, Pope Francis actually approved the miracle and uh, then paved the way for the beatification mass uh, to be celebrated. And so, of course, uh, we rejoiced. They've got everything ready. And uh, then, of course, um, there was the pause. They wanted to uh, look at a few other things, you know. And so uh, I always say we're on God's perfect timing. And uh, sometimes we're spoiled with a number of saints that were fast-tracked, I said. You know, like Mother Teresa, it seemed like she died and then became a saint. Uh, saint John Paul II, he died. And within a few years, he was uh, declared a saint. So uh, I think we're spoiled a little bit. Uh, typically, the church moves quite slow uh, with saints and takes 50, 60, 70 years. Uh, so I think sometimes, again, we were expecting a quick turnaround with uh, Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen, but we're on God's perfect timing. So um, I think the majority of our viewers uh, would agree that Fulton Sheen is a saint and he is in heaven and he's interceding for us here today. So I, I, amen to that. Praise be to God. Now, I, I do want to dive in the books. I, I, I wonder, I don't know how we can do this, uh, if this is even possible, but with a, a quick uh, stroke of your brush, very quickly, uh, for those who may still not know who, <laughs> who he is, uh, and, and it would be, it'd be funny to, to realize there's still people out there that don't even know who Fulton Sheen, uh, right. who he is or who he was. Can we do sort of a few minutes of just a yeah. quick overview? Where, where, where's he from, yeah. his upbringing? He's, right. he's been a priest, bishop, archbishop. Right. Okay. Uh, and, and what's he famous for? Great. Right. I'll give you a quick biography. And um, yes. again, if you, if you miss what I said, you can always visit my website at bishopsheentoday.com. And again, you just Excellent. remember that Bishop Sheen for today. So bishopsheentoday.com. There's a, a biography. I mean, there's, there's the links to find out everything about his life. But, you know, the Coles Notes are the short form. Uh, born in 1895 into a, a beautiful family, uh, grew up on a farm. Uh, the parents, of course, wanted what was best for their children. And so they moved their children into the city. And uh, there, uh, Fulton Sheen got a good Catholic education. Um, of course, he was a great student, so he studied hard. And uh, of course, um, went and went off to the um, 
the priesthood, of course, and um, again, was a brilliant student, um, and so, so much so that uh, his bishop asked him to do uh, studies after and get his doctoral thesis, and uh, he has a number of doctorates, but he was ordained in 1919, and uh, of course, went over to Europe to study at Louvain University, um, and there got his super doctorate, which was um, Again, he was the first American to do that uh, as the Cardinal Mercy Award. And uh, again, his bishop asked him to come back to Peoria to serve in a small parish, uh, thinking that he was going to go straight to one of the big universities uh, and teach at Oxford or Yale or the Catholic University of America or something like that. But instead, the bishop asked him to serve in a little Catholic parish uh, in, you know, uh, in Peoria. And so uh, he did that out of obedience. And uh, then after two years of serving as a, you know, parochial vicar, as a assistant pastor, um, he, the bishop called him into his office and he said, um, okay, I want to send you off um, to the Catholic University of America to teach. And uh, of course, Fulton Sheen asked his bishop why. He says, I just wanted to see if you would obey. And he did. Wow. And that was the beauty of his priesthood. And so he went off to the Catholic University of America, where he taught uh, there for 20 years. And of course, he ended up on radio, uh, being the host of the Catholic Hour. And uh, he was such a hit that four to five million people would tune into his radio broadcast each week. Uh, and these were Catholics and Protestants alike. So um, again, he had everyone's attention. And then in the 1950s, he transitioned to television, uh, which was a new thing at the time. And uh, his Life is Worth Living broadcast um, actually had an uh, estimated audience of 30 million viewers each week Amazing. and uh, because uh, in 1951 he was consecrated as a bishop and um, and so uh, he um, you know he used his um, I guess his fame uh, to do this um, ministry because he was the first um, televangelist <laughs> that's the right word televangelist and he came out with his bishop's um, um, you know his his cape and uh, you know he just um, it just had these this great look to him and so people were very enthused by his um presentation and of course his style so uh, again watch his videos um again many on youtube today i think there's about 150 of them out there uh but he's just he captivates his audience so um so it's really good that he did that and uh so in the 50s and the 60s he was on television and of course a prolific writer always writing books each year and of course he had this newspaper column for 30 consecutive years from 1949 to 1979 where people would uh receive wow. his wisdom each week and so um there's somebody that uh all of north america saw on a weekly basis either through the radio through television or through the newspapers and of course he had an international flair because he would travel uh, all over the world because he was uh, the um, director of the pontifical mission society which of course had its arm uh, this outreach to the poor in africa oceana um, again all over and so he raised money for the poor all over the world and so he brought the poor to our attention so uh, he is well loved all over the world so um, and then of course he went to be with our lord in 1979 uh, when he passed away and uh, there was 2,000 people that filed by his coffin on the um, you know before his funeral and of course uh, Again, as soon as uh, he went to be with the Lord, I think people were asking uh, the church to declare him a saint. And here we are uh, a number of years later about to do that. So uh, right. again, I don't know if that uh, makes sense, but that was our little uh, quick uh, tutorial on the life of Fulton Sheen. And uh, there's many, uh, he has so many accolades and awards. And uh, again, he has touched so many lives because he was very personable. Um, you know, I get the um, privilege of crossing all across North America giving talks about Fulton Sheen. And it doesn't matter what city I go into, everyone has a Sheen story, a story about how he watched, they watched him as a young child on television, or in fact, they met him at an event and they were touched by his presence. And uh, I've met people who were baptized by Fulton Sheen, uh, other people who were married by Fulton Sheen. And so um, again, he touched 
millions. And uh, everyone has a Sheen story, uh, including myself. You know, I have a few to share, but uh, I think we're here to talk about his books today. So uh, we'll do that uh, together. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, we, we're excited. We, we've, we've got an article coming out uh, in the Narrow Gate um, as well on our website, which we are uh, pulling from uh, some of the about us to learn more about your your ministry there, Bishop Sheen, today. There's so much information. And we just invite people to to really dive in and to learn about this great uh, man who um, really, God willing, will be canonized uh, uh, in our lifetime. We can see that and witness that. Uh, can we talk about your books? The so 12 books. Uh, you've gone and uh, sort of found these books um, from Archbishop Fulton Sheen and have given them a refresh, uh, uh, you know, uh, taken them, uh, given them new covers, um, new formatting. You formatted the inside and now re-released them. Uh, and we're very pleased to announce that Perusia is um, officially um, printing them locally in Australia and making them available for the local areas here, Australia and New Zealand um, and down under here. And we, we are very excited about this. And I'm holding them uh, in my hands here. So I don't know if people can see this, but we are, I have quite a few. You have 12 all up. We're going to go through them. Can we list them sure. first? And then we might then uh, go one by one and just right. sort of talk a bit about each. So let's go from the top. There are, there are 12 right. to get through. <laughs> What, what are the titles? Well, again, I, before I uh, give you all the titles, I'll just, you know, people always ask to say, I know that Fulton Sheen wrote 66 books. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I thought they were all copyrighted or I thought, you know, some of them were lost or, you know, they always kind of wonder how did you, um, you know, access these writings. And, um, you know, a lot of times I say, you know, you have to spend time in the library and do a lot of research to find out uh, which ones are public domain. That's the term they use, which ones yes. have copyright still in force and uh, which ones I think are the lost treasures that uh, people haven't seen in years. And so I've got a combination of all three. <laughs> so, uh, But still, I think what I realized with Fulton Sheen, there is such a power to his writings on the cross and many of these books have what I call the seven last words theme to them. In fact, eight of the books um, are his writings from his years of giving Good Friday addresses, uh, giving his Lenten homilies, like a series of talks. And each year he would give uh, a series of talks that would cater to a different theme. And he would take that theme and then tie it into the seven last words. And so you'll start to see that connection as we go through all of these books. And so uh, the books in order, and I'll go in a, a chronological um, um, yes. you know, way, is that uh, we took the uh, first book, which is called The Seven Last Words and the Our Father. And or it's called The Lord's Prayer and the Seven Last Words. Because Fulton Sheen, in the years 1933 and 1935, gave addresses that tied in the seven last words to the seven parts of the Our Father. And so that's the first book. Uh, the second book is uh, Calvary and the Mass, and it was penned in 1936. And it's uh, Sheen's reflections on the seven parts of the Mass and the seven last words. Uh, we then go uh, another year, and uh, Fulton Sheen then released a book called The Cross and the Beatitudes, uh, where he tied in seven of the Beatitudes into the seven last words. Uh, then in 1938, he released the book The Rainbow of Sorrows, and uh, he ties in, uh, you know, why there's unjust suffering, pain, um, why the innocent suffer, uh, and again, did a beautiful um, set of meditations on why there's, there's trouble in the world and gave us, uh, again, a beautiful consolation in the cross. And so, again, that was his 1938 edition. 1939, he wrote Victory Over Vice, which is uh, about the seven deadly sins and how the seven last words are the antidote to the seven deadly sins. And then the following year in 1940, he wrote a book called The Seven Virtues, where he tied the virtues into the seven last words. And uh, so then the seventh book and the eight book series is uh, The Seven Words to the Cross, 1944, where Sheen um, explains to us seven groups of difficult people that we need help uh, 
interacting with. And then in 1945, he wrote a book called The Seven Words of Jesus and Mary, where he, complain, where he uh, compares uh, the seven last words of Jesus on the cross with the seven times that Mary spoke um, during sacred scripture. So uh, it, it was kind of neat. So those eight books are on the seven last words that have these themes tied into them. And then there's four other books um, that I wrote, uh, which are, of course were Sheen's writings on the holy hour. And so there's a, a holy hour prayer book. And actually it's, uh, it is my best selling book. And so the holy hour and Fulton Sheen seem to go hand in hand. And uh, I, then I took the liberty to combine two books in one. And so there's a book called The Calvary and the Mass and the Holy Hour. And so it's a beautiful um, uh, meditations of the Eucharist. And so it was just, it just seemed right to put two books into one. And so there's that edition. And then there is this book called uh, Missions in the World Crisis, a book that Fulton Sheen penned in 1963. And uh, he pretty well gives stories uh, from his missionaries uh, from all over the world and kind of gives us a snapshot of what is happening in the church, um, you know, in every continent. And so, uh, you know, there's challenges still today. And so when you read that book, uh, you start to realize, wow, uh, nothing has changed. <laughs> there's problems in every country and the church is under attack. And uh, yet the title of that book, it has this beautiful, um, you know, subtitle called Unless Souls Are Saved, Nothing Is Saved. And so uh, I think I, I love that uh, battle cry of Fulton Sheen, Unless Souls Are Saved, Nothing Is Saved. So a uh, very good book. And the 12th book is a book called The Cross and the Crib, When Calvary Becomes the Nursery. And so uh, it's a collection of Sheen's writings on the Blessed Virgin Mary and how at the foot of the cross, we became children of Mary when he said those beautiful words, woman, behold your son, and to the apostle he loved, behold your mother. At that moment, we became children of Mary. Uh, Jesus, of course, was her firstborn son. The scriptures tell us that. But St. John became her firstborn uh, through spiritual adoption. And, you know, Peter was probably the secondborn, uh, Andrew the third and we the millionth and millionth born mm. chil children of Mary. So it's kind of my little love story of how Fulton Sheen uh, got my attention and helped me to truly have um, a beautiful relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mary and, um, you know, to get right with my mom, to get right with my heavenly mother. And so it's called The Cross and the Crib when Calvary becomes the nursery. So that's a quick synopsis of the titles and a little bit about them, but we'll go through them one by one and, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, hopefully, uh, you know, develop an appetite with the, the, lure, the viewers to uh, say, maybe I'll get one or two or all 12 of them, uh, but still they're great books. They're great books. This is uh, so exciting. Um, and, and, and I'm just, I'm excited to, to make sure that people we dive into these books now one by one okay. um all right so let's start with the top from the top yeah yeah i'll do the first three here and um I'll hold them up and hopefully everyone can see them at home and uh with the lights and everything but you'll see here it's the lord's prayer and the seven last words and i entitled it uh, gave it a subtitle two bridges connecting heaven and earth and uh you know when we think of the lord's prayer it's really us praying to god the father this bridge between us and heaven and um you know uh, hopefully we pray that prayer every day and yet our lord when he was on the cross he was saying his our father he was imploring with god father forgive them for they know what know not what they do father into your hands i commend my spirit so again a very beautiful prayer he was having that bridge between heaven and earth and um again what fulton sheen does in this book and uh, we've really spent a lot of time on the back cover to help people. Uh, you'll see that iconic picture of Fulton Sheen by the blackboard. And uh, then there's this description of how the seven last words are tied in uh, to the Our Father. And I'll have to pull up my reading classes here uh, as I'm getting uh, older, you know, and more mature. Uh, but you'll see, again, here's a, an example. Um, the first part of the Our Father is Our Father who art in heaven. And yet it ties in beautifully to the first word from the cross when our Lord said, Father, forgive them, 
for they know not what they do. And Mm -hmm. I think when you read this book and then you start to pray the Our Father, you're going to start thinking about Calvary. You're going to start thinking about that great love story of how God loved us so much that he died on the cross. And uh, again, this is what I find that this book does is this book um, solidifies your prayer life. It anchors you and it anchors you to the cross. And I, I think this is one thing that Fulton Sheen did so well. He, um, if you ever watch him on television, you'll see him many times, he would grab his cross and almost like he's saying, look at this, you know, uh, put your eyes to the cross. And um, I think it's a great devotion. I think this is something that uh, we tend to um, leave out of our lives. Like how many of us have a devotion to the crucifix where we have a, a cross on our desk or a cross, um, you know, on our night table that we pick up every day and look at it and gaze upon it and thank the Lord for dying for us. Um, again, it's a beautiful devotion. And I think Fulton Sheen, with all of these meditations on the cross and the seven last words, does that. So, again, um, there's a little bit on that first book. Yeah, uh, again, beautiful. the Lord's you, Prayer and the seven last words. It's on the, on the back is the, uh, um, the full Our Father there, isn't it? It is, yes. And, and again, how he ties... Uh, everything in uh, so beautifully and um, line by line. You know, Amazing. I'll, I'll give it yeah I'll give another line here just to uh, to um, you know it's um, you know thy kingdom come it's like he says woman behold thy son well who better to help usher in the kingdom than the blessed virgin mary you yeah. know um i mean talking about uh, ministry <laughs> she helps us in our ministry but again you can see that beautiful connection thy kingdom come and woman behold thy son so wow. beautiful again, uh, beautiful little book okay uh we'll go into book number two here uh calvary in the mass and uh i've uh put a new subtitle on this and i call it the two summits of grace uh, because really, uh, Calvary is on a summit. And uh, again, there's a great grace that came from uh, Calvary. And of course, the Mass is the source and summit of our life. And so um, uh, this classic from 1936, uh, Fulton Sheen ties in the seven parts of the Mass into the seven last words. And I've put that on the back cover, and you'll see it there. Um, you know, again, the Confidior. Uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so we go to Mass. And, and this is what I found is that uh, the Mass came alive for me because the Mass is Calvary reenacted. Yes. Uh, we have to remember that the Mass is Calvary reenacted. And so when you go through the Mass, you think of it, uh, the Confidior, uh, you think of the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And we take that time at Mass to say, Lord, I'm sorry for having offended thee. And, uh, you know, mea culpa, mea culpa. Um, and so that's that part of the Mass where you can tie it in beautifully to the seven last words. And then we go to the offertory. And uh, we think of the good thief uh, on the cross uh, beside our Lord. And uh, he united his suffering to the suffering of Christ. Um he recognized that Christ was the big host and he was the little host on the Patton and that he united his small cross to our Lord's big cross. So the good thief in those words, this day you'll be with me in paradise, tie in to the offertory. That's beautiful. Uh, we continue with the, the sanctus, 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 or the holy, holy, holy. And of course, we think of the holiest person we know of course in the blessed virgin mary and those words woman behold your son behold your mother it's like um if you want to become holy uh, you need mary <laughs> you need mary so yeah. uh when i hear those words holy 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 i think mary 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 uh boy i need mary so uh again you can see how this is coming alive here um you know the consecration our lord says my god my god why have you forsaken me? He's just offering up everything, uniting his suffering to God. Um, and we know that that is the beginning of, I think it's the 22nd uh, or 23rd Psalm. Yeah, it's 22 20, or 23, depending. Yeah, <laughs> version, you know, if you're Dewey Reams or, you know, thing. Yes. So you've got this thing where he's, uh, it's starting off with despair, but ends in victory. And, uh, but again, the, the consecration and those words. Uh, communion, he gives the words, I thirst. 
in that communion is this interaction between uh, giving and receiving. Uh, you know, when we come up for Holy Communion, we hopefully, of course, receive uh, our Lord, but we also give ourselves to, to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, but again, He thirsts for us. He thirsts for us. And uh, we continue Fantastic. the, you know, the Ita Missiess. It Ita Missiess. Got to work on my Latin here. Uh -huh. uh, it is finished. Um, the Mass is ended. Go in peace. So, uh, but you can see how this whole thing it fits beautifully. So, you know, Calvary in the Mass. The Mass is Calvary reenacted. But when you go to church next time and you meditate on the seven last words in the mass, you'll go, oh, you know, anybody that says mass is boring, hasn't read this book. <laughs> so uh, there we go. Okay, uh, we'll go on to the book number three here. And um, hopefully our viewers are, are liking this uh, yes. little bit of a show. But uh, here we go. So this is, again, The Cross in the Beatitudes. And I put the subtitle as The Two Greatest Sermons Ever Preached. And uh, because you think about these two sermons, there's the Sermon on the Mount, which is the Beatitudes, and then there's the Sermon from Mount Calvary. Um, and again, it is the greatest sermon ever told, wow. according to Fulton Sheen. Um, there's no better preacher in the history of the world than the dying Christ, and there's no better sermon than the seven last words. And so uh, Fulton Sheen uh, ties in the Beatitudes uh, into the seven last words. And so uh, we've listed them all on the back. Wow. And so, uh, again, I'll go through a couple here. <laughs> and, you know, this would, of course, I, I get a little giddy because my faith just um, increases so much. You start to really see, wow. Our Lord loves us. And, you know, when we, you know, we know when we connect the Old Testament to the New Testament and you, you go, oh, you know, you, you have your great Bible teachers uh, that you have, of course, at Perusia, and you just see them go, wow, they just, they just connected the dots. I just feel yes. like, you know, God is a show off, you know, and God is a show off with uh, some of these, uh, you know, things that he connects. So uh, it's so beautiful. It's like, you know, blessed are the meek. Um, and then, of course, he ties in the words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Our Lord was truly, um, you know, showing us meekness. Mm, he was yes. meek and humble of heart. He gave, he, you know, he, he took up his cross. He let them nail him to the cross. He was meek. Uh, yet meekness is not weakness. Meekness is strength. Uh, again, it's, um, again, our Lord practiced meekness and he leads by example for us. And so when we think of that, uh, you know, um, we'll never see the Beatitudes in the same way. We'll connect them to Calvary. Um, he gives uh, another thing, uh, blessed are the merciful. Um, and then of course he extends mercy to the good thief. And he says, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And so wow. you can see that's a beautiful connection. Uh, blessed are the clean of heart for they shall see God. And then of course, woman behold your son and the son behold your mother, of course, our lady, of course, the queen of hearts. So yes. uh, you see that. Um, blessed are the poor in spirit. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because many of us feel that low moment uh, in our lives where we feel poor in spirit. And so uh, you can see how Fulton Sheen is saying, be of good cheer. Our Lord suffered um, a great deal and uh, you can learn from him. Uh, we continue, blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Um, and he says those words, I thirst. Um, and of course, blessed are the peacemaker. Uh, it is finished. Uh, he's come to bring peace to the world. Mm. And uh, wow. we finish off with blessed are they that mourn. And uh, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. So um, I just, you know, just spending 30 seconds on this, you can see, wow, our God is a show off. And Fulton Sheen, uh, being a scripture scholar, was able to connect the dots and say, there's a connection between the Beatitudes and the seven last words. There's a connection between, uh, you know, every, everything can point to the cross. And you start to see every one of these uh, books points to the cross. And Amazing. where did he get this from? Amazing. <laughs> where did he get this from? So there we go. Now, it's, it's your turn to show and tell. And I think you're going to show up. With the, <laughs> I can have a go. Rainbow, the Rainbow of Sorrows. Okay. And we'll see how your camera does. I mean, yeah, well, a lot of bright the, lights. Uh, I think I think I'm going to hold mine up here. I think yeah, we, I think I my think light is very shiny. This is a light gloss is very cover. shiny. 
I think it's your halo too. It's quite, you yeah. know, it's doing that <laughs> reflection, but okay. I'll, we'll hold up mine. We'll, I'll be the show and tell guy here. Okay. So um, you can, you can take it easy there. Okay. So this one's the rainbow of sorrows. And uh, we did the subtitle, the seven last words and the art of understanding pain and suffering. It, I tell you, this is one of these books that Fulton Sheen wrote that was never republished. Um, and this is what I found is of the 12 books that I released, um, four of them have not been seen in wow. 60, 70, 80 years. And so this is one of them. Uh, this book uh, talks about, you know, unjust suffering, why there's pain. And, you know, you kind of wonder, you know, you kind of understand why it was never republished because who wants to uh, order a book on suffering? pain um you know maybe it's not uh, the, your first pick but now because we've endured so much suffering and pain i think uh we want to uh, maybe have the mystery explained to us yes. and fulton sheen does that so beautifully in this and so that's why it's called the seven last words and the art of understanding pain and suffering mm -hmm. and you know i learned that from one of your um uh you know team members at perusia there uh, george uh, Manessa, I think it is. Ah, uh, yes, George. George. I love George. And it's the art of practical Catholicism, right? So we always talked about the art. And I thought, hmm, I think I might use that in <laughs> some of these titles here because it's an art uh, to learn, um, you know, how to deal <laughs> with pain and suffering. So, um, you know, I think there was something there. So I'll have to give George a little bit of credit there uh, on that. Oh, but, good time. Uh, okay. Yeah, but to unpackage this book, so again, I go to the back cover and it's got that iconic uh, Fulton Sheen uh, on the blackboard. And uh, again, you'll see how beautifully Fulton Sheen ties in uh, these words. So when he speaks about unjust suffering, he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Our Lord didn't deserve what he was getting. He was innocent. He was nailed to the cross and he suffered unjustly. And yet he says those beautiful words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Uh, he teaches us about pain through the good thief. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, those words, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And, you know, the good thief, uh, pain uh, opened his eyes. Uh, he realized he was suffering yes. for his sin. And, yes. um, of course, that um, that moment that he realized that he was... Um, guilty of his crime and he was paying a price uh, he rebuked his fellow thief and he said those words he says you know do you not, do you not fear god we deserve this we deserve yeah, this fine. punishment that man beside us he's innocent he's innocent and then of course he looked to the lord and said please remember me and he said those words this day you'll be with me in paradise mm. so um again do you want to understand pain Meditate on the good thief and you'll realize that pain has a place. God will use pain sometimes to bring us to that yes. awareness that we need to reconcile with God. Um, you know, Fulton Sheen would say pain um, is the megaphone, <laughs> the megaphone of God uh, where he gets our attention. So um, again, That's I think so true, the thief, <laughs> pain. yeah, wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, we go into wow. the, the suffering of the innocent. And we think of behold thy son, behold thy mother. I mean, yes. Our Lady, I mean, talk about the innocent suffering. She didn't deserve this. Uh, she was losing her son. Uh, he was dying on the cross. And she, I mean, this is the innocent suffering. And the one thing that Fulton Sheen um, taught me is, remember, you had something to do with it, Al Smith, and all your friends too, right? In that we sometimes forget wow. that, it was our sin that put our Lord on the cross. And yeah. so we're guilty of, of that crime. And yet his mother is at the foot of the cross suffering. And it's my fault. You know, I mean, it's, it's got me to the point where I thought, I have to apologize to the Blessed Virgin Mary for my role in the death of her son, because it was my sin that put him on the cross. And so Fulton Sheen, uh, I tell you about uh, moving me. And I've, he's moved, you know, tens of thousands of people with just these reflections of how Mary suffered. And, uh, you know, how does that make you feel? <laughs> how does that make you feel? Well, 
uh, it makes me feel not too good, right? So, but again, he, he lets us off the hook and he says, don't worry. She loves you. Just reconcile and everything's good. But uh, it's important that we understand what unjust suffering is. Um, and of course, Our Lady, um, I mean, it's the suffering of the innocent, especially. All right. Uh, we then go to the words, God in the soul. And uh, when our Lord says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because I think one thing that Fulton Sheen really stresses is that we're afraid to look into our soul. We're afraid yeah. to spend that time and, and meditate. And because it, it's a scary place. It's a scary place to look in the soul because we don't really spend enough time on our soul. And uh, again, those words, uh, my God, my God. Um, I think we need to, again, look into our soul. And that's where Fulton Sheen uh, gets our attention in this book on that chapter yeah, alone. Fantastic. Um, he talks about the need for zeal. And of course, the words, I thirst. So we need to thirst uh, for not only our Lord, but the serving in his kingdom. And uh, again, there's a meditation called the planned universe when he says it is finished or it is consummated. And remember, this is a planned universe. Our Lord... Um, mm. again, he orchestrated this a long time ago. He got to make his own mother. He got to uh, fit us into the plan and, of course, him into the plan. And it is, it truly is a planned universe. We have to realize that God is in control. Amen. And so it's quite good. And then, of course, the last chapter is on eternal freedom. And uh, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. But uh, this is one of my favorite books because... It hasn't been seen by uh, many in all these years. And so it's nice to release this lost treasure and uh, yeah. let people enjoy it. So the rainbow Thank of soil so uh, help you to wow. understand um, pain and suffering. <laughs> so, and there's enough of amazing. it in, in all our lives. So, uh, so okay. Uh, what are you to move on? Do we need to take yeah, yeah. So a we're, we're only um, halfway. Um, and, you know, yeah. the next one now is... Uh, the seven virtues. So we're no, going to no, talk about no, 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 no. The next one. No, you've got the that one, one actually. No, yeah. So we got to keep going one. in sequence. So, and you can see, what, and this is where I say Fulton Sheen was a great parish priest. Absolutely. So he he would take us on a lesson. So you can just imagine this parish priest, and he's saying, "My parish is five million people," mm. you know, because again, he's hosting a Catholic hour, and so he knows he's got three to five million people tuning in each week for year after year after year. So you can just imagine him. He talks about the seven last words in 1933. And then next Lent, he talks about the Our Father. And then he goes, okay, now I'm going to teach him. I taught him the Our Father. Now I'm going to teach him about the Mass. And so then he does his seven reflections on the Mass. And then the next year he goes, okay, I'm going to teach him the Beatitudes this year. And like, this is the parish priest kind of saying, I've got these homilies laid out for my people, my parishioners, There's four million of them. And I'm going to teach him about the Beatitudes. And then it, next year he goes, okay, now I'm going to teach him about why there's pain and suffering so that they get it, right? And, and then he goes, okay, now I'm going to talk about sin. <laughs> and he's going to give the seven lectures on the seven deadly sins. And then, of course, he's going to talk about the virtues the next year to help them. Okay, okay here's the seven deadly sins, but now here's, here's the seven virtues for you to practice. And but so, again, I'm just trying to make um, my point that Fulton Sheen is a parish priest who has a lesson plan in place and he's just delivering the lessons. He's just delivering the Amazing. catechesis to yes. uh, millions of souls uh, on the Catholic hour. And all of these books are his sermons from the Catholic hour turned into books. And so oh. you'll see in many of them, there's seven lectures and they're about 20 minutes each. Um, and so they were the homilies from his Catholic Hour program. And so yeah. he would speak for, you know, 20, 25 minutes each week in the Catholic Hour, even though they said it was the Catholic Hour, it was only 30 minutes. Uh, but again, his lectures were around 20 minutes in length. So uh, again, very easy to read meditations that you could do one a day and uh, really just chew on them. And so um, again, that's the joy of Fulton Sheen. He is a great catechist he's a great teacher he's a great parish priest and that's how i've taken him as i thought here's a parish priest that cares about my soul who's giving me guidance who's giving me some lesson plans that i can take to heart that are understandable and uh they're just relatable to me uh, i get it i mean <laughs> i'm not a an academic um 
Now, I guess I am, but, you know, I don't consider myself too bright, you know, but, um, you know, my mom says I'm pretty smart, but, you know, it's kind of like, and I want to say hi to my mother too, who's watching, you know, I always think of that. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes my mom's my biggest fan. And of course, I think mothers are the biggest fans of their children. So uh, I say hello to my mom who's watching. So, all right. Uh, back to the books we go here. I yes. Guess. Yeah. So, but it's a great. Right. So, so we're here 1939. Okay, so now we're on to this, um, the, the season of Lent, and he wants to talk about the seven deadly sins. So uh, he penned this book, Victory Over Vice. And I've made a subtitle, The Seven Last Words and the Art of Overcoming the Seven Deadly Sins. Right, because right. it is an art to overcome the seven deadly sins. And I tell you, um, you know, when people want to look into their soul and amend their life, you got to tackle the sins. Uh, everyone's mm. got one or two of these seven deadly sins and uh, Fulton Sheen lists them on the back. And of course he gives the antidote for each one of these sins, you know? And so I'll go through them quickly and you'll start to see, wow, he gets it. He gets it. Uh, so again, for the sin of anger, he says, father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So if you've got an anger problem, just think about those words, father, forgive. And Fulton Sheen brings to our attention, he says, listen, um, we love to look at our neighbor's problems uh, and we just, we're very picky against our neighbor because we don't want to look into our own soul. We'd like to pay attention on everybody else, but not ourselves. But still, you know, when we think about how our Lord has forgiven us these great sins, yet we ha can't even forgive our neighbor. And so, again, he teaches us, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when you take those words to heart, they know not what they do. Truly, when they say sin blinds, yeah, it blinds. Yes. And so a lot of times people don't know what they're doing. But again, for this sin of anger, he gives this antidote, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. We continue, you know, with the sin of envy, which many people struggle with and, um, you know, he then points us to the good thief. And uh, again, those words, this day you'll be with me, be with me in paradise. And um, the good thief had no envy in him. Of course, he had that moment of clarity when he said to his fellow thief, you know, do you not fear God? Uh, you know, we deserve this. He's innocent. Um, you could just see he wasn't envious of our Lord's power. I mean, now the bad thief was because he said, you know, if you be the Christ, uh, could you get us down from this cross so yeah, I can go yeah, steal yeah. some more? You know, like, uh, use that power and smite your enemies, okay? Stop this forgiveness stuff. Like, let's get going. <laughs> like, you know, you could see his, the other thief, he, he you know, <laughs> yes. um, yeah, he, he was envious. And um, again, but yet the good thief wasn't envious. And so we can learn about how to overcome the sin of envy by watching the good thief and you know i mean the good thief shamed me in that he took that moment to uh, reprimand his friend his fellow thief and yet here i am a lot of times when someone's speaking ill of the church someone's speaking ill of a priest do we ever raise our voice and say hey don't be talking about the priest like that don't be talking about my church like that don't be talking about my yeah, lord like that like a lot of times we cower we cower. Mm. And so uh, the good thief is that reminder. Don't cower. Again, That's don't it. have any envy. Just stand up for your faith. So uh, thank you, Fulton Sheen, for uh, reminding me about that. So uh, we continue. Okay, the lesson plan. of How to overcome the seven deadly sins. There's the sin of lust. And of course, yes. we live in a world where uh, an age of carnality. I mean, it's a very dirty world out there. And yet Fulton Sheen gives us those beautiful words, uh, woman, behold your son, behold your mother. And he gives us over to the Blessed Virgin Mary to help us with our impurity. Uh, she will help us. I mean, you talk to uh, anyone and uh, who has overcome the sin of impurity, and they'll always say, well, it was the Blessed Virgin Mary that helped me uh, by her holy example, her intercession. And of course, uh, who was her escort or companion uh, to Calvary, she brought Magdalene with her, mm. uh, a redeemed prostitute. And so, uh, again, a great example for us to know that if Magdalene can be redeemed 
uh, by the power of our Lord and the power of his blood, uh, we can be redeemed too. We can be restored yeah. to a purity. And so we need to go to the Blessed Virgin Mary to help us. And uh, I know Fulton Sheen um, reminded me, uh, he'd say, remember that great saying mothers would always say to their sons, especially when they'd go out, they'd say, now remember, son, don't do anything that your mother would be ashamed of, okay? So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, represent represent i don't know charbel if your mother ever said that to you uh, yeah. <laughs> but i i know my mother said that to us all the time. don't embarrass me okay like oh, don't do anything that your mother would be ashamed of and i think fulton sheen kind of gives us a gentle reminder not just for the men but for the ladies too so yes. uh, let's make our moms proud okay so oh, beautiful uh, um. Yeah, uh, we continue with the sin of pride and uh, those words of our Lord, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And uh, so, um, again, our Lord was offering up that suffering for all the atheists, the know-it-alls. Um, again, it, it is one of these things. Pride is, I say, the worst sin, they say. And um, again, our Lord humbles himself at that moment uh, when he says, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? But uh, again, a beautiful chapter on the sin of pride and how to overcome it. And uh, we continue. Of course, he gives us the antidote for the sin of gluttony by the words, I thirst. Uh, yeah. Because gluttony is not just food and drink. Gluttony can be in sports. Uh, you know, uh, we, we can be addicted and uh, thirst for so many other things. Just be, That's uh, a great point. Yes. Yeah. I Often mean, missed. How many... How many people in Australia uh, love footy? You know, it's yeah. like, um, you know, it's uh, we all have our favorite sports we love to watch. And uh, in, in Canada, it's hockey. Uh, but yet still, it's not just food and drink. It can be entertainment, sports. Mm. And yet our Lord is saying, I thirst for a relationship with you. Um, you know, when we're honest and we say, how much time did I spend in prayer, meditation, uh, versus my time following the sports channel. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. painful, yeah. Uh, we have a lot to account for, that's for sure. Uh, but yet, if we remember those words, I thirst, that the Lord is calling out to us uh, every day, that he's thirsting for us, hopefully we'll respond. We'll respond. So, yeah. right. it's so clever, uh, what, what Archbishop Fulton is doing here, comparing yeah. you know, the greatest sermon on the cross, which is beautiful, and, and yeah. he's got over seven books. There's eight of these that we're going through. Now, we, right, we yeah. um, <clears throat> for the sake of time, I want to make sure we get through all of them. And if, yeah, we yeah. might have to limit it to one or two from, from each sure. book just because there's okay, so yeah. many. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. And a, a reminder yeah. to everyone, go to the, the website. I mean, they're, they're all very affordable now. Um, for this mm. region, um, you know, Australian dollars, $19.99, you can get these books. Um, and, you know, that's about 13 US dollars. And if we think about before today, we would have had to order them from overseas and, yes. and pay the shipping, and, and you're up for $30, $40 with the shipping included. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's less than half price when you think about um, the savings from shipping. So thanks be to God, whatever it is, and thank you, uh, Alan, for this. Uh, what else we got um, in, in the series? Yeah, here? okay, yeah. So anyway, okay, so everybody knows, if you want to overcome the seven deadly sins and become a saint, this is the book for you, okay? Yeah, amen. So, okay, so to counteract the seven deadly sins, you need to practice virtue. Yes. And so Fulton Sheen uh, gives us the seven virtues and ties them in to the seven last words. And again, you'll see on the back here, he has the uh, virtue of fortitude, hope, prudence, uh, faith, temperance, justice, charity. And, mm -hmm. you know, you can see just a few connections there right away. Uh, the good thief had the virtue of hope given to him, of course, because he got to hope in the Lord. Uh, mm -hmm. He trusted in him, asked him to remember mm -hmm. him. And, of course, um, I like to say uh, Jesus saves, and he saved that good thief on the cross. And so the virtue of hope with the good thief. And, of course, the virtue of prudence. We think of uh, who better to be um, united to than the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, mm -hmm. Our Lord was very prudent in leaving us. Uh, with her. So um, again, you have that. So of course, temperance for to overcome the sin of gluttony. And uh, again, charity to overcome the sin of greed. And so this is a great uh, balancing act, I like to say, where you now have something that you can practice uh, virtue um, in reparation for the seven deadly sins. So uh, there we go. And uh, I know that you 
that we'd like to move as quickly as possible, but I think that gives a good synops- synopsis yeah, on that book. Absolutely. Uh, again. And you'll notice too on, on the covers that I always put uh, the three crosses uh, just to keep reminding us. Um, yeah, you've you know, got one there. I've got, yeah, they all have a yeah. cross on it. They all have three crosses in them. And so every book that I produced, uh, I put the three crosses on. It's kind of my trademark because um, we don't think of Calvary enough. I mean, how many of our evangelical friends will say, oh, you Catholics, you spend way too much time on the cross and the suffering Christ and all this stuff. Yet it's it's our redemption. It's, uh, um, it's the greatest love really. story. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all this stuff. So uh, mm-hmm. there we go. All right. So we'll go to this book here. Uh, this is the seventh of those eight books, uh, the seven words to the cross. And it's the seven last words in the art of understanding difficult people. Um, this is again, one of these treasures that hasn't been released in 80 years, uh, hasn't been seen. And also the seven virtues uh, from 1940, this one has not been republished uh, since 1940. So, um, mm. you know, both these books are the lost, uh, some lost sheen gems that I dug up again and brought out for people to enjoy. So, um, again, these um, uh, these uh, these are just treasures. And so uh, the reason why this one wasn't republished for all these years is because these seven groups of difficult people um, are the intelligentsia. Uh, the humanist, um, the moderns, the, the sensationalist, and you'll see them all on the you know the back cover here as I hold this up, um, mm-hmm. and of course uh, these groups are still with us today. Uh, we still have the intelligentsia with us, and how to deal with them. We still have the moderns. Um, we still have the sensationalists, those people that are looking for a faith that's ex- that's exciting and vibrant, and you know if it's if I don't have the great music and this and that, I don't want to go, you know, it's like, um, but uh, again, Fulton Sheen, he nails it. He nails it in this book. And again, these are people that, you know, people always ask, well, how do I deal with a know-it-all? Fulton Sheen will tell you how to deal with a know-it-all. You know, how do I deal with, you know, a humanist that it's all about, um, you know, he wants to hold up a cross, but not a crucifix um, because, you know, uh, the crucifix convicts them. It makes them feel guilty because they see the Lord on the cross. So uh, all of these things. So, again, these are uh, Fulton Sheen's little words of wisdom, how to deal with Amazing. those difficult people. And then the eighth book in this uh, seven last word series is the seven words of Jesus and Mary. And I subtitled this the Christian guide to understanding motherly love, because um, you will start to see just how much Mary loves us. And Fulton Sheen uh, shares how seven times in sacred scripture, Our Lady spoke and how they tie in so beautifully with the seven last words that our Lord spoke from the cross. And uh, again, uh, you just go through these and uh, you know, when you think of the first one, uh, we talk about the value of ignorance And uh, Our Lady, the first time she uh, spoke in sacred scripture, she said to the angel, how could this be? Because I know not man. And yet our Lord says from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So you see the connection between the words, know not man and know not what they do. And so uh, that's just one of the seven uh, times that you'll be able to see how she connects Mary to Jesus and that they're truly united to each other. And uh, again, this book helped me to really appreciate uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary and how um, she leads by example to say, we're on a mission. We're on a mission to follow Christ, to serve Christ, to be united to Christ. And Mary leads the way, not only by her action, but by her words. And so uh, excellent, excellent book. And you'll see, of course, the three crosses there in the- There it is again. There again, so we're all good. And again, this iconic Fulton Sheen on the blackboard. I think everybody knows and loves that picture of Fulton Sheen. So, yes. um, you know, and, and I, I apologize for rushing through the last few, but, um, you know, my experience has been is that every book has something uh, in it. And I think it, for your personal growth, because as I said earlier, Fulton Sheen is this parish priest who has developed these lesson plans, who is trying to guide us 
into how to overcome sin, to practice virtue, to live the Beatitudes, to uh, you know participate at Mass, to love the Blessed Virgin Mary, to bring difficult people to Christ. <laughs> like It's like, I mean, there's a parish priest who is feeding us, teaching us, and just loving mm-hmm. us. And of course, he left us uh, these lessons there. So uh, we'll quickly go through the four other books that uh, are... Uh, so that that uh, were the, the, the seven last sayings theme um, linked. Yeah. They were all sort of grouped, if you like. I mean, that's, that's right. a show in itself, but now we've got these others, which is beautiful. Yeah, um, and, and okay. And so this book is called The Holy Hour Book, and it's got a, a gorgeous cover. This is in Peoria. This is the main altar of Peoria, and the monstrance is on the altar, and, of course, this uh, picture of our Lord there uh, in the back. And so just a handsome cover. And in this book is Sheen's writings on the holy hour. Why to make the holy hour? Um, you know, various meditations to, to guide you through a spiritual journey. And you'll see on the back here, it's, um, again, he gives a list of, of uh, what I almost call a bit of a retreat he wants to give you. Um, again, there's seven chapters, and uh, each chapter uh, brings you closer uh, to understand the Eucharist, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Of course, uh, I think of, uh, you know, and I love these titles. He'll, he'll talk about, um, you know, how the divine life in us is lost and our final end. Like he talks about you can lose your soul. And that you need to uh, be very careful not to lose your soul uh, because you have the divine life in you, in, in you and you can lose it. And so uh, you need to save your soul. So uh, this is a bit sobering, but also, again, very comforting because he gives you, of course, some guidance. He talks to you about the duty of self-denial um, and you need some help to deny yourself, you know? And so these are just beautiful meditations. He uses the saints um, as a guide. And so uh, again, Fulton Sheen, 62 years, he made a uh, holy hour every day. And so he's poured uh, his wisdom into this book. And so this is, again, my bestseller is the holy yeah, hour prayer book. I can book. see so, why. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, so there you go. And that He's known for that, isn't he? Archbishop Sheen, the hour of power. You know, this is... This yes. is the holy hour, um, and yeah. we should, we're all encouraged to do one and visit right. our Lord where possible. Right. And uh, what I did was I'm, I'm a thrifty um, in that I like to uh, give value to the reader. And so I took two books and put them into one. So I combined the holy hour prayer book with Calvary and the Mass. And I called it the transforming power of the Eucharist uh, because there's that tr- transforming power of Eucharistic adoration. And many people have said, you know, I've been touched and blessed uh, during my holy hours. Almost uh, many people have been healed in the presence of the Lord uh, during Eucharistic adoration. And of course, the power of the Eucharist at Mass. And so um, again, it was just very fitting to put these two books together. And uh, again, I just thought it was a little bit of a holy inspiration. And uh, for those who are thrifty, uh, there's some value in this uh, uh, volume of having two books in one. So uh, the Holy Hour and Calvary and the Mass. Uh, Now, I do have a a bit of a thicker read here. And this is this book from 1963 called The Missions and the World Crisis. Unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. And it's very good... um, uh, I want to just say, read of of what the challenges are all over the world, uh, you know, and he teaches us how to be missionary minded. Uh, when I read this book, um, I hadn't yet started my mission society in Canada, but after reading this book, I actually formed the Archbishop Fulton uh, Sheen Mission Society of Canada and uh, again, really developed that missionary zeal. Uh, to go out and to preach to nations. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not here to baptize everyone. (laughs) I mean, we, of course, the good Lord has sent us many good and holy priests to do that, uh, but still to go out and preach and teach. And so uh, we all are missionary-minded, I hope. And uh, I know there's a sign in the back of some churches that say, uh, you are now entering into the mission field. Um, it's true. As you leave the church, you're going back out into the mission field. And a lot of times our own families are the mission field too. So uh, this is a very good book, Missions. It looks like a really good read. There we go. Okay. And then the last one is just my little 
um, a collection of writings uh, that Sheen put together on Our Lady. Uh, it's called The Cross and the Crib, When Calvary Becomes the Nursery. And I entitled it A Journey of Discovery with Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen. And again, what this is, is it's a collection of Sheen's writings on the third word from the cross, woman behold your son, uh, son behold your mother. And so he goes through, um, again, what I've done is I've taken one chapter out of each of the eight books that we talked about okay, here. Okay, yes. Um, and always the chapter that pertains to Our Lady, uh, Woman Behold Your Son, because what Fulton Sheen did okay. is he says, you have a mother wound, you have a mother wound, and you need to fix it. And and I'm like so many of uh, other people out there, we have mother wounds. Um, you know, our mothers, um, we maybe thought they were unkind. Uh, we maybe thought they were not charitable, uh, but they were just trying to mother us in difficult times. And sometimes we take that mother wound with us and we have a hard time loving the Blessed Virgin Mary because we're having a hard time loving our own mothers. And so Fulton Brilliant. Sheen was able to guide me through uh, you know, a journey of healing and discovery to truly reconcile with the Blessed Mother. Uh, and I do talk about it in the last chapter about uh, a little bit of my story of how I sensed that I needed to apologize to the Blessed Virgin Mary because I was guilty of the death of her son, uh, kind of almost like a drunk driver that woke up and sobered up and realized what he did. And it was the same idea. So uh, Fulton Sheen has helped me to fall in love uh, with the Blessed Virgin Mary in a very special way. And so, of course, the name of this book, The Cross and the Crib, When Calvary Becomes the Nursery, uh, it's that beautiful time when I became a child of Mary and yes. uh, the whole world did too. So again, a very good read, a very handsome cover too. I just, uh, <laughs> I applaud my uh, good friend, uh, actually from Jamaica, <laughs> Kingston, oh, Jamaica, wow. who developed this uh, cover for me. So kind of an international flair. And, um, and this is yourself. My... This is amazing. This is you yes. uh, putting this, this is not Archbishop Fulton Chain. You sort of yeah. are tying yeah. it together. Yeah, so that's what I did is, yeah, I took the best of Sheen and put it into a collection mm. and wrote the introduction and, of course, the last chapter and, um, of course, just shared my little story because I want everyone to have the same experience of being reconciled with our Heavenly Mother. So uh, so there we go. Uh, there's wow, 12 books for all of Australia to enjoy and uh, New Zealand and hopefully people from the Philippines can also Absolutely. order Absolutely, Philippines, and Malaysia. These books too. Yeah. Um, um, and, and again, it's a real blessing for me to be able to do this because the Lord has just um, kind of just said, go ahead. And, you know, the technology that we have now, we can all right. kind of uh, put things together and uh, use these, uh, you know, Word documents and all this stuff and, and compile this. And, um, you know, there's always, everybody's got a friend who's an artist. So I have a good friend in Canada that developed all these covers with these beautiful landscapes. And a lot of this is Canadian uh, landscape. So I think a lot of this is from Canada. You're seeing uh, parts of Canada here. Okay. So it's my way of, of uh, you know, keeping it local. And I'm sure that Australia has got some beautiful landscape and uh, scenery yeah, too and um, uh, stuff like that. But uh, no, uh, again, a lot of good uh, people have been behind these projects. And so uh, glad to be able to uh, uh, do this as a labor of love. So thank you, Sherbel, for, um, you know, taking these books on. And um, again, uh, very enthusiastically too, I would say so. Oh, uh, yes. Very good. Yeah. My pleasure. I want to thank you for your, yeah, as you say, labor of love, all that effort you put in to really um, bring these back to life and make them relevant today and, and using the mm -hmm. technology. So they are available in both digital and physical formats. People still like holding a book and reading it yeah. and and especially those still many people in lockdown around the world, they can, you know, what a great time to actually, yeah, take time and read and take advantage of this mm. opportunity. Um, read and, and there's a wealth of knowledge here through Venerable Archbishop Sheen. Now, not just available, now that we, we have announced here it's now available in the Southern Hemisphere, but around the world, uh, those who are watching who are not in the Asia Pacific region, um, where can they go uh, uh, to get copies as well? So USA, oh, right, yeah. uh, Canada, right. UK, where, where can they go? Yeah, I mean, uh, Amazon, um, you know, Amazon has got this worldwide wide reach. So, yes. um, you know, there's Amazon in the United Kingdom. There's Amazon in France. There's Amazon in Germany. There's right. Amazon, of course, in Canada and the United States. So uh, all of these books are on the Amazon marketplace 
in these countries, uh, you know, Brazil, um, I'm amazed, Japan. Um, so um, again, I think there's 12 major countries that Amazon serves and um, makes these books available. So um, again, if you're in the Canadian marketplace, you can go to amazon.ca or, you know, the American marketplace and go to amazon.com. Uh, you can still find me on bishopsheentoday.com and you can Excellent. order the books through uh, there. Um, but again, it will just redirect you to the Amazon link nearest to you. And um, okay. so again, we're encouraged by that. So uh, again, it's one of these things where we just wanted to to make these uh, works available once again. And as I said, four of these books haven't been seen in close to 80 years. So nice. uh, it's really nice to uh, be able to do that. And of course, those books were The Rainbow of Sorrows, The Seven Virtues, uh, The Seven Words to the Cross, and The Missions in the World Crisis. Uh, unless souls are saved, wow. nothing is safe. So um, nice to do that uh, by all means. So uh, again, Charbel, thank you for that. And um, again, okay. I'm, thank you. I think I'm going to be coming to per Perusia almost every week to do a full unpackaging of each book because I Excellent. could speak for 30 to 40 minutes on each book. I, I think I was just scratching the surface here. That's right. I know we that's went over right. time today. Um, <laughs> you know, it yeah, that's, long that's a great to... point. In Perusia world, we'd love to, um, over in Perusia world, we want to encourage everyone to come over and have have you come on more regularly and go through these and it, have yeah. a bit more time would be phenomenal to do that so um right th yeah. thank you i mean oh you're welcome like i mean i read the book victory over vice every year um wow. you know and, and I, what i say to people is that a lot of these books are not just what i call one and done uh you read them you keep them and then you pull them out uh, once a year just as mm. a refresher because um if you're really working on your soul um, just as if you were working out at the gym, you'd make sure that you uh, spend the time, uh, you know, on that. And so uh, once a year, I read Victor over Vice just to give me that little tune up to make sure I'm on point and that I'm getting it right. And the same is true with the Seven Virtues and many of these other books. So um, again, they're great. Uh, it's great to have a good library in your own home. Yeah. And I, I cannot stress this enough. I think uh, when people asked me years ago, what, did you, what does your library look like? I didn't really have many good books. I didn't have a good library. And, uh, but yet raising, uh, you know, my three children with my good wife, uh, we saw the need to have a good library in our home. And, you know, behind me is just a few of the books that I have. We have, of course, many other bookshelves, but it was important to build a good a resource just not for ourselves but also for our neighbors and for you know our, our faith community because we yes. like to lend books with each other so uh, it's good to have these books on hand uh, to use in your own personal uh, family uh, you know catechesis and to lend them out to others so uh, again we cannot stress how important it is to build a good personal library amen to that i totally agree well Thank you. We are over time. Um, and, and I want to thank you for joining us here. But again, please visit Bishop Sheen today. Get to know more about Alan's work and, and his great apostle. Get a copy of these books. Get the whole set at, at the moment. And there'll be more coming out over time. So please pray for us over here. Um, and you are all in our prayers. Visit perusiumedia.com as well. Get a copy today. Thank you, Alan. God bless you. And we'll close with that famous saying, unless souls are saved, nothing is saved. Love sure. that. Venerable Fulton Sheen, pray for us. Pray for God bless you, everyone. We'll see you uh, next time. Take care. Welcome to the Perusia podcast, inviting expert guest speakers each week to discuss their own faith journey, as well as a different aspect of the Catholic faith, every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., live on The Voice of Charity. Mm -hmm.